Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this video is not a video that I usually make but I've had a bit of frustration come upon me in the past sort of few weeks or so with video games and I just thought that it'd be nice for me to make a video just to sort of, well I guess vent my opinion um, to you guys on my channel. So basically it's about DLC and I hate video game DLC. Recently I pre-ordered Far Cry 4 for the PlayStation 4. It arrived a day late unfortunately, um, although that was to do with, that was actually my fault because I clicked the Amazon offer which was, to, um, the Amazon option sorry, that was to package your, your items in as few packages as possible. It meant that I had to wait another day for my Far Cry 4 game to arrive because I had another, I actually had a Christmas present that I'd ordered for somebody and I had to wait for that to be packaged, but the game came anyway, it was fine, it wasn't a problem, gameplay is great, the game's fantastic actually, Far Cry 4 is a fantastic game. But anyway, I had a, a code, a pre-order code with Far Cry 4, and I, it's it's with Uplay, which um, I know a lot of people hate Uplay, I don't, I actually hate Uplay as well, it's uh, it's kind of annoying, um, it's typical uh, Ubisoft, you know, it, I had the pre-order bonus, I went on to the Ubisoft website you uh, and on Uplay signed in I have a Uplay account because I, I play Assassin's Creed played quite a lot of Assassin's Creed played all of them actually <laughs> and uh, yeah so I, I signed in no problem went onto the Uplay account no problem and basically I put my pre-order code in and the pre-order code was um, I think it's Blood Blood Raven or Blood I can't remember the name but it was Blood something it was uh, anyway I put the code in it's a uh, special DLC hoax Herc something, it might be Herc's Redemption, or maybe I got that wrong. It might be Blood something with Herc's Redemption. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, the point is, it was extra missions, extra content for the game, which was pre-order bonus. So I had it because I pre-ordered the game. Come a loyal customer, etc. Put the code in. The code doesn't work. <laughs> so um, I went online to see if this, is, if this is a problem, and it turns out it is a massive problem. If you type in pre-order bonus not working lots and lots of threads come up on various social media websites and various forums for this problem and it's just irritating extra content you know DLC F FLC free you know free free content as well as downloadable content I mean I can't even get the free content for, for Far Cry 4 and it's just irritating and that brings me now to Rome 2 I don't want it to be a knock Knock. I don't want it to be a rant sort of video about a particular game. That's why I've you know I mentioned a few different games here. To be fair, because this isn't just a problem with with one particular game or game series. It's actually something which has happened in quite a lot. So as you can see on the screen that has been on the screen for this video, it's my Steam page. It's actually the Steam page for uh, Rome Two, and all the prices on here at the moment are the current um, retail value price in pounds, pounds sterling, Great Britain. I am Welsh, so for those of you that are new to my channel or for those of you that are American or Australian, I'm Welsh and British, so this is all going to be in pounds. Um, and basically, the the retail price for the game is 29.99. I think it's always been around about that price. Um, so we're going to put that in, 29.99 on the calendar, um, on the calendar, on the calcul calculator, got my words out finally class how much it costs okay I think it was 35 pound on release I think but it's 29.99 now and that's what I'm gonna go with so the first DLC is Hannibal at the gates um, 9.99 not a bad DLC altogether um, preferred it over season goal I'm gonna get into all that in a sec just gonna put the prices in for now so we have the Greek states which I got, got a lot quite a lot to talk about by the Greek states as well so put that in just gonna put them all in for the moment we have the nomadic tribe so 5.99 we have Blood and Gore, which is also silly, so I'm going to put that in as well. Why pay for Blood Effect when it should be in the game from the get-go? We're going to put 9.99 in for Caesar in Goal. Pirates and Raiders is next, 5.99. Beasts of War, why the hell are we paying for Beasts of War? That DLC added nothing, to be honest. Nothing that I've used in my campaigns. Uh, Daughters of Mars, again, is 1.99. Put that in. Black Sea Colonies, which I haven't bought and I won't be buying because I've gone off the DLC by this point, so I'm just going to put that there. And the Imperator Augustus, you don't pay for. That was a free one, so equals 79.90, is it? 79.90. It's nearly £80. We'll say it's £80. Round it off to an even figure. 
eighty pound for the game and all the DLC. Okay, that's what it comes to altogether. All the DLC put together is nearly fifty pound, as you can see. It actually tallies it all up there at the bottom. Is it worth it? Probably not, in my opinion. And I'm not going to rant about this. I'm going to keep it quite civil because I do. I know I love Total War. Most of my channel is Total War oriented. There have been people that have made videos ranting and raving about Rome 2, the problems, the patching, all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to go into that because I'm not that type of person to moan. This is going to be quite a civilised kind of discussion, I hope. You know, I hope this is, does turn into a discussion in the video. Um, Rome 2 on its own, £30, not too bad. Handle at the gates, 9 99 Happy enough with that. Uh, Handle at the gates added a few new factions. Uh, it, it added a new campaign map and it was more of a story based um, oriented kind of campaign, mini campaign which we have had quite a lot of in the past on Total War if you take your minds back to Medieval 2 we had the Crusades campaign where you could play as Saladin or Richard the Lionheart uh, we had it with the, the Britannia campaign where you could play as William Wallace or you could play as uh, King Llewellyn the Great for Wales um, in, in Napoleon Total War you could play as Napoleon and you could play in the Napoleon campaigns in, in Italy and in the Alps and in Egypt so you know it's, it's not it's nothing new it's it's kind of a sort of standard I guess standard kind of campaign or mini campaign we have it with Shogun 2 with Rise of the Samurai and Fall of the Samurai uh, you know DLC which add new campaigns new factions etc not a problem Handle at the Gates I enjoyed it I did an Aravaki campaign on my channel which lasted about 35 36 episodes I, I loved that campaign and overall that was a worthwhile DLC so we give that a little tick I suppose that was good Greek States right this is the big one the Greek States culture pack this is my why I hate DLC Sparta Athens and Epirus should not have been DLC they should be in the the main game or at least Sparta should have and possibly Athens as well because their main um, factions of the antiquity period most people wanted to play as Sparta before the release of the game now if these were pre-order bonus um, factions so because I like I didn't pay for this I pre-ordered the game so I didn't pay the 599 but that you know it's not worth it in my opinion because they were obviously ready for release with those factions. They just basically had to change a bit of code in and, and go, yay, you can play as these. A little bit like the the mods that came with the game a few days after, a few days after the release, where, where you could play as all factions. Just play around with the code in, you know, with the game files, make it playable, and that was it. And that's all they had to do. But instead, they decided, nope. If you want to play as Sparta and Athens and Epirus, pre-order the game. It's obviously it's to boost sales, to try and plug the game as, as often as you can and it's something I hate in the video game industry plug in plug in plug in certain things which should be in the main game just to improve sales I hate it it's horrible let's move on so the nomadic tribes culture pack 599 again is that worth it oh I don't know most people didn't seem to care too much about these if you go on YouTube right now and look at any youtuber that's currently playing Rome 2 and the factions that they play in as is Rome 2 it's actually quite difficult to find anyone playing as the Nomadic Tribes and not many people have actually played the campaigns or finished campaigns on YouTube with the campaigns. I would assume that would probably be the same for people who don't do YouTube and just do kind of their own single player or, or multiplayer thing. Um, they don't have any, barely any good inventory, the Nomadic uh, Tribes. Um, I'm trying to think, Masagetai, Masageta, Roxolani, I can't remember the... Th oh, get, get, oh God, I can't remember the name. Get. You know, I can't even remember the name of it, but you know, three factions. Um, are they worthwhile? I suppose you could argue that's that's sort of borderline. Okay, I suppose two pound per per faction isn't too bad, but they're not really factions that I would say would be in demand. I certainly don't think they were, so probably a no for me. Blood and Go, another one, one ninety nine for Blood and Go. Why on earth should you be playing pay money for a special effect which should be on the game's options? They say that it's because of marketing, because they the game has got to be advertised for children, etc. But at the end of the day, this game, I mean, I think it's on the Steam page if you have a look. Does it say the age age rating? I don't know. It should have the age rating on here somewhere. I think the age rating for this game is something like 15, so yeah, you wouldn't expect. Just quickly have a look. It should say on here somewhere. You know, you shouldn't expect. Um, most 15 year olds are okay with blood in my opinion they, they play Call of Duty, you get blood on, on games like Call of Duty and Battlefield and stuff like that so I, I don't see the problem 
what they should do is have blood and go as an option on the special effects menu on the graphics menu do you want to, to have blood and go on or off yes or no that should not be a dlc yet again pay your money for something which should have been in the game on release caesar in goal again this is one which i agree with 999 it changes the map you get to play as uh, caesar and you know his his generals like uh, mark antony and lepidus etc do you play that? I can't remember. Do you play as Lepidus? Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, um, you, you know, get to play as their generals. You get to play as Caesar. You know, Caesar actually has a character model and everything on the map. You get to research different technology, but except the technology it goes towards the triumvirate. So, do you want to do technology for Caesar, or do you want to do technology for Pompey or for Crassus? That sort of thing. I thought Caesar and Go was pretty good. It was definitely a step in the right direction as a DLC and I you know for the most part I agree with it. The next one's Pirates and Raiders, five ninety nine. Um again, probably not. Pirates and Raiders, um the factions they they're all the same. I mean, this most of these faction packs most of the factions in them are, are factions that I probably you know, for the most part would say no. I mean I know I covered um some of the Pirates and Raiders stuff on my channel, so it would be hypocritical of me to say you know, no, I wouldn't play as this. Cause I, you know, I actually have played uh, the Pirates and Raiders DLC factions, or a little bit of them at least. And again, you know, the RDI, for example, um, they have a two hundred percent bonus for raiding. All there is is just a change of stat. The other two factions, the get, I think it's the Getai and uh, I can't remember the the other one. Um, but they they're all just stat changes. They they have the same units pretty much. Illyrian spearmen. They can get um, Illyrian hoplites. And and if, you know they have basic sort of cavalry, um, and then it's basic infantry, swordsmen, mob units, stuff like that. And then the only kind of change of the faction, the actual faction, is the faction logo, and the settlement where they start. And the only other thing then is the bonus. So I think one of them has a hundred percent raiding bonus, another one has a hundred and fifty percent raiding bonus, and then the third one, the RDI, have like a two hundred percent raiding bonus. That's all that really changes. So again it's kind of copy and pasted you want know, you actual factions that kind of you know mean something on the campaign map the big guys you know if you, th if you take your mind back to shogun 2 you have the choso kabe which were which were which are uh, expert bowmen you know they have um, improved accuracy and cheaper upkeep costs you know you have the the otomo which you know they have a christian religion so you take other buildings it's going to be a problem you've got to really manage how you you take buildings on the campaign map and how you convert them to the christian faith and you also have the the portuguese guns as well which you can use as as a kind of advantage on the campaign map these are actual factions which had a bit of personality on the map whereas like the pirates and raiders you just got four factions that are, that are pretty much the same thing apart from starting location and, and a few stats and that's kind of my point with dlc some of it's not worthwhile Beast of War, I'm not even going to talk about Beast of War apart from it's a waste of time. Uh, Daughters of Mars, again, you know, it, it added some female units, which I thought was good. You know, they were actual, f actually female units. You know, in the time, it, it's noted in history that, you know, females did actually fight in some of these armies. So, again, you know, it's not it's not a bad DLC, that one, actually. And for 199 you know, it's cheap, cheap enough. So, yeah. And then, finally, we have the Black Sea Colony. Now, I haven't bought this one. I won't be buying this one. And it's pretty much for the same reason as the kind of what I mentioned about the pirates and raiders and the whole copy and paste thing. Cymeria, Pergamon, and Colchis. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in playing as those factions, to be honest. You know, just, I'm not ranting or anything, but just take your minds back to before the game was released, and think to yourself, right, what was I thinking before oh, in September or, or in October? not October, in August, before the game was released. Take your minds back to that and think to yourself, well, what faction was I looking forward to the most as playing? I'm guaranteed most of your answers will probably be Rome, Carthage, Macedon, Iceni, Sparta, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, Sparta, maybe Athens. They are the factions that most people wanted to play as, and yeah, um, that's kind of my point, really. <laughs> um, the whole DLC thing... That I've mentioned here with with Rome too, it's not it's not something that I'm that much of a fan of, and this isn't just Rome too. This is this is Ubisoft. This is EA. Okay, we'll talk about EA for a few moments as well. The Sims. You know, any of you who played The Sims? If you have, you probably know how how annoying it is with The Sims that you 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 spend lots and lots of hours building the perfect home for your 
if you're family you know you're role playing a bit you've got you've got a, f a family of, of four of, of four people a mother a father two children you know mr baker jeremiah baker or wh whatever you, you call your characters and you you want to get the perfect house you spend hours on it and you only have four chairs for the house and you're not happy with either of them because they're crap and you you want to go on the menu to get a different chair and you see that it's it's got a a, a pay uh, thing basically you have to go out and buy a special pack for a few pounds just to play just to play this game with the chair that you want and you know EA are buggers for this sort of thing they they lock everything and uh, behind sort of payment walls and stuff and and content which should be in the game has actually been stripped back and this is something which years ago didn't happen I mean taking my mind back to years ago back in the PlayStation 1 days and games were a lot cheaper than you know a PlayStation 1 game back then was like 20 pound 21 22 pounds something like that in your, in your local stores PlayStation 4 games are about 40 to 45 pound and you know, it's mad to think how far we've come with those with those prices and etc and games back then they, you know content which which they um, was in the game you know it wasn't DLC it wasn't added after behind the pay thing you could actually um, have the game and everything you wanted in the game was there and then and that's my point that I'm gonna try and make <laughs> or tried to make in this video anyway for those of you that have watched the video until the end thank you for watching this video I hope I didn't bore you too much and ran too much but I just felt compelled to make this uh, well, this video. I've been Dragonheart. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.